Dr. Kim Langdon with CCM Health, and I'm here today to discuss the topic of osteoporosis. We'll be going over some of the causes of osteoporosis, risk factors, things you can do to prevent it, and um, things you should watch out for. So with that, let's get started and discuss osteoporosis. Let's discuss osteoporosis. Here's a picture of the inside of your bone. Um, but let's discuss what osteoporosis means first. It basically means porous bone. It's a disease that weakens the bones, which makes you at risk for sudden fractures. It means you have less bone mass and less bone strength. You usually don't have any symptoms um, or pain associated with it. One of the first symptoms is often a fracture. Uh, so who gets osteoporosis? Well, a lot of people get osteoporosis. It's more common uh, after the age of 50. It's more common in women, um, but men can get this as well. Uh, osteoporosis is the disease state, whereas osteopenia just means it's sort of the early stages or the thinning of the bones, um, not quite too porous, but osteopenia does lead to osteoporosis. And it's responsible, um, osteoporosis is responsible for 2 million fractures each year, and this number continues to grow. There are treatments that uh, you can take to minimize bone loss. So we don't know all the causes of osteoporosis. We know uh, the aging process and lack of engine, estrogen can do that in women, um, but the bones are living, growing tissue. We have different types of bone. Trabecular bone is the outer shell. Um, and uh, no, the trabecular bone, excuse me, let me stop here. See, I can't see some of this. Okay, let me start over on this. Okay, so what causes osteoporosis? Um, well, we do understand how osteoporosis develops, but we don't always know why it develops. Um, the bones are living, growing tissue, and the healthy bone looks like a sponge. And this is the inner area that's called the trabecular bone, whereas the outer shell is the denser bone that wraps the trabecular bone. So, um, and that's called cortical bone. When osteoporosis occurs, you get a holes in the trabecular level. So the sponge's holes get larger and more numerous. And so this weakens the internal structure of the bone. Um, the bones store calcium. And so when we need calcium, we actually can draw some calcium from the bone. It breaks it down and then rebuilds the bone in the process of gaining calcium for the bloodstream and the rest of the body. Here's a picture of it. As you can see, there's bone marrow deep to the trabecular bone. The spongy is the trabecular bone we're talking about most. The cortical bone is the hard bone. Then the periosteum covers the cortical bone. Um, and then there's a place called articular cartilage, which is where joints articulate with other joints. Um, and what are some of the symptoms of osteoporosis? Um, well, sometimes we have no symptoms, but you should look out for loss of height. So as you start getting shorter over the years, a change in your posture, such as stooping over, bending forward more, shortness of breath due, a, due to a smaller lung capacity, and that can be due to compressed disc, bone fractures, and pain in the lower back. So everyone is at risk for developing osteoporosis, but it does increase with age. Women undergo a rapid bone loss first 10 years after entering the menopause because estrogen helps preserve the bone. Actually, after the age of 25, everybody starts losing small amounts of bone, but it accelerates in women after age 50. Um, it does affect men and, and they are likely to get um, osteoporosis more commonly than even prostate cancer. Um, and 80,000 men per year are expected to break a hip. And Unfortunately, men are more likely to die within a year of a hip fracture. Your risk of developing uh, osteoporosis is linked to ethnicity. Caucasian and Asian women are more likely to develop that, but it can develop in other ethnicities. And in fact, African-American women are more likely than white women to die after a hip fracture. Another uh, factor is your bone structure and your body weight. Petite and thin people have a greater risk of developing osteoporosis compared to those with have, who have larger frames and more body weight. And then your family history uh, plays a role as well. 
Um, there's some other things that can increase your risk an overactive thyroid or parathyroid or adrenal glands. If you've had a bariatric weight loss surgery or an organ transplant, that's primarily um, from transplants due to the medications you're on. Uh, if you're on hormone therapy for breast or prostate cancer, uh, or if you have a history of always missing your periods throughout your younger years, inflammatory bowel disease, blood diseases can also lead to osteoporosis, as can medication. Steroids are the most common cause of uh, problems with osteoporosis, as are breast cancer and medications for treating seizures. Um, some things you can do um, to lower your risk is um, make sure you get enough calcium and vitamin D in your eating habits. Um, make sure you are active, doing weight-bearing exercise. Things as simple as walking and lifting weights are very helpful. Stop smoking um, because that increases your risk of fracture and heavy alcohol use, which is defined as two or drinks a day or more can increase your risk of osteoporosis. So the way we diagnose it, it's called a bone mineral density test, also called dual energy x-ray absorptometry called DEXA or DXA scans. And they use very small amounts of radiation to determine um, how solid uh, or dense your bones are at the spine, hip, and wrist. Um, regular x-rays don't work unless you have very advanced osteoporosis. And it's recommended that women 65 or older should have a baseline uh, or earlier if you have risk factors and men over 70 or younger men, if you have risk factors, you should have one of these tests to screen for osteopenia and osteoporosis. So the best thing you can do is exercise, take vitamin and mineral supplements, medications. Um, it has to be weight bearing exercise. So unfortunately, even if you like to swim, it's not the best choice. So try to make sure the weight bearing exercise is um, done at least three to five times a week. There's uh, several medications we'll talk about in a minute. Um, it's hard to know. Your doctor will know based on your risk factor and degree of osteopenia or osteoporosis what medications work for you. Um, many of them, simple things like estrogen replacement therapy can prevent bone loss and can help sometimes build back lost bone. But testosterone and Avista are two such hormone-related therapies. Um, if you're a man, testosterone can help. Raloxifene um, acts like an estrogen on the bone, so it is also used in the treatment of osteoporosis. And calcitonin, uh, miracalcin, and fortical, uh, they're synthetic hormones, and they can also reduce your risk of uh, bone fractures. But they do have some side effects. Bisphenates are treatments that are considered anti-resorptive drugs. They stop the body from resorbing the bone tissue, and there's various... Uh, regimens. You can do it monthly, daily, weekly, sometimes even yearly. There's a list of them there. Fosamax, Beneva, Actinel, Reclast, a few of them. Sometimes you can stop taking those after three to five years and you'll still uh, derive benefit from it, but they do have some side effects that can be annoying, such as flu-like symptoms, heartburn. Um, there are some potentially serious ones. Um, so uh, very rarely will you take these beyond five years of use. There are biologics. Prolia is the one that comes to mind. It's an injection given every six months to women and men. Um, we don't know its long-term effects, but um, uh, we do know that it works in um, helping reducing uh, fractures. Anabolic agents such as Avenity and Fortio um, are approved, uh, for, especially if you've already had a fracture and you have osteoporosis. So this product, Avenity, enables you to build new bone and decreases the breakdown of bone. Um, however, it's an injection monthly, two injections actually monthly, and you can only take this for a year. Uh, another injectable drug is given daily for two years. Uh, those are drugs likely to be used as a last resort due to uh, taking an injection daily would be uh, less than desirable for most people. So how do you know if you have uh, osteoporosis? Well, the T-score is measured on that DEXA. Remember I talked about that DEXA scan to see how dense your bones are. If you're negative 2.5 or lower, then you should take therapy to reduce your risk of fracture. Um, some women might need to take therapy even if they uh, have a T-score higher than minus 2.5, meaning they have osteopenia. 
Uh, it depends on your risk factors. So the your doctor will assess your risk of a dense of a of a, of a fracture and decide whether you need to go on medication, even if you have osteopenia. So supplements, you should be on calcium and vitamin D. Almost everybody's deficient in vitamin D. So it's good for a lot of things, but calcium you should have between 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams daily. Um, unfortunately, it can build up in the blood vessels and lead to constipation. So uh, you need to be careful how much you take it and how frequently throughout the day. Since you can only absorb 500 milligrams at a time, it's best you take your calcium supplements and um, divided portions or get it through your diet in milk. Other sources are salmon, um, sardines, broccoli, fortified uh, juices and breads, other things like that. So this is just shows your age group and how much is recommended. Uh, obviously, if you're over uh, 51 and you're a woman, it's 1200 or um, and that should continue for the rest of your life. Um, talks about vitamin D. These are international units. Um, you, you almost can't get too much vitamin D. So any vitamin D over this amount is more than useful. Again, vitamin D helps the bones, has been shown to have other uh, benefits to your heart and reductions in some forms of cancers. Besides uh, uh, your mental well-being. So obviously you want to reduce your risk of um, osteoporosis. So besides the exercise, such as jogging, walking, weightlifting, don't drink too much alcohol and please stop tobacco of all types. And what can you do? Well, the best thing you can do is not fall. So this means that in your home, you need to keep your floors free of clutter. You know, don't have throw rugs and loose wires and cords about the house. Um, make sure there's good lighting. Don't make, you know, don't have slippery floors. Don't wax your floors. Make sure you clean up spills immediately. Have grab bars, things you can hold on to in the bathroom because the floor gets wet. Outside, um, you should always have good light, lighting outside of your home. And rather than holding on to a purse or something else, a backpack will keep your hands free to help you in case you do trip or fall. Um, wear sensible shoes with non-slip bottoms. So, you know, as you see your doctor, your, do your doctor will assess you. But if you have questions, you should talk to your doctor about your risk factors for osteoporosis, especially if there is a family history or you're on uh, a variety of medicines. Um, you know, the fractures are very debilitating besides being painful. Uh, they limit your mobility, can increase your risk of, you know, blood clots and other complications like pneumonia. So discuss this with your doctor. This is Dr. Kim Langdon with CCM Health. Don't forget to visit our website and see all our videos, our education educational videos are very helpful. You can download them. You can visit us on social media. And that concludes our discussion about osteoporosis. Have a great day.